not-for-profits that that uh, uh, perform uh, great uh, uh, services and performances uh, within the city. So, with that welcoming and introduction, let's let's go ahead and and get started and, and go through the the presentations this year. Yeah, so our first presentation, um, so kind of the way, well, first of all, let's um, welcome our newest member. And do you want to say how you say your first name? Is it? Sh Sorry, uh, it's Shona. 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 Okay. I just didn't want yeah. to say it wrong. So yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so maybe we could just go around and have everyone introduce themselves so that Shona Thank you. knows everyone. So we'll start, Thank you. With, we'll start with Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff Lamson uh, from the City Council. Okay. All right, Dave. Oh, you're on silent, Dave. You're on mute. Dave is also on the City Council, and okay. I'm on mute now. Uh, Laurel? Uh, Laurel Smith, just a community member who loves Orem. This is her second time. <laughs> and Bren? Yeah, so I'm, my name is Bren Bybee, and I'm the Assistant City Manager for the City of Orem. And Stacy? Hi, just a normal citizen. I think this is my uh, fifth year. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, Stacy and Danae were just reappointed, so. <laughs> Looks like Stacy. So glad to have you. <laughs> and then Spencer. Uh, yeah, Spencer Rands. Uh... This is my third year doing this. And then, yeah, just a citizen of Orem that likes to be involved. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, we. Spencer, how long have you had the beard? Oh, I've, I've done it off and on since since COVID started, you know, just kind of, you know, six months here, three months there. I think, I think last time I saw you, you were clean shaven. It might be, and it'll be, it'll be gone in a week, so it might not be in the next meeting. So <laughs> there you go. Keep us guessing. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you how the night's going to run. We have, I believe, we have ten presentations for the night. We'll have a break in the middle of them. Um, we're asking them to present for seven to eight minutes, including questions, and we've allotted ten minutes for each one, um, so that will give us time to. Um, and then at the end, we will um, um, discuss these presentations for tonight. Um, and then next week, we will have, we actually will have 11 presentations. We've had to add one um, that was missed. Um, so we'll be having one at 7.50. It'll be a little bit later night next week. Um, and that's the new fit to recover. And um, that's one that hasn't applied before. So, um, and then we'll discuss and look at deliberations and allocations. So that's kind of how the process is. Um, as soon as Scott gets here, I'll let him in, but he has not joined us yet. So um, we'll wait a few more minutes. Does anyone have any questions about the process? Anything like that? Okay. So um, I'll just tell you this, we will be presenting the major grants and the recreation and library grants, things like that um, on at our work session for city council on May 10th. Um, and then we will this at our work session at three, around three o'clock. Then on the 24th of May, we will be doing deliberate, the council will be deliberating the care. Um, and then we will accept the final care on June 14th at City Council. So that will be the process after these two nights. I'm sorry we don't have lunch or dinner or virtual dinner for you. <laughs> so, Jeff, you're in here twice. Are you trying to get in again? Oh, can't, oh, you're on, you're on silent. I was just checking to make sure I could get on. I, I'm going to need to step away. Oh, that's right. From the office for a little bit, but I'll uh, I'll have my phone with me, so we'll be here. Well, this is Brand's first year doing this, so we'll muddle through together. <laughs> All 
Yes. So uh, if anyone else is, is new, we're, we'll, we'll get through this together. And I, I'm, I hope everyone realizes we're, we're trying to stay as consistent with uh, proce the processes of, of past years. And um, so, but rest assured, we'll, we'll make sure it, it all gets uh, reviewed and, and, uh, in, and presented before the council on, on ultimately what uh, this body recommends. Okay, we'll take take a few minute break and we'll get started as soon as Scott gets here. So thanks, Kenna. Thank you. Yes, that's what we'll, we will do. Hi, Danae. How are you today? Good. Sorry, I was caught up in making dinner, but oh, oh you're fine. Like, oh. We're just we're just um, waiting. The per the first presentation is ready, so we'll be doing um, about seven to eight minute presentations between each of them. We have ten tonight. Um, I'll just let people in as they're presenting. Um, just kind of like we've done before. Okay. Um, and then we'll, we'll have a break about midway, the small break. So, okay, sounds good. Yeah, I don't know where I would think Scott would be here by now. Where are you, Scott? <laughs> I'm watching my email too to see if anyone's like struggling.
So do you want us to have our cameras on or do you want us to just, are they just gonna be having their main presentation up on the thing? Yeah, I mean, some of them have present, I mean, I've only received one presentation, so oh, okay. we'll, I don't know. I'm mean, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Okay, mine, I'll mine, leave it on unless I'm eating. No. Yeah, mine shows the side of my face. <laughs> So I don't put my, <laughs> unless I'm home and I'm not home, I'm at work still, so. Okay. So can I, have we uh, tried to call Scott or? Um, yeah, he was supposed to be here right at six. So it's not quite six. If he doesn't get on, I will call him. Okay. Nice to put a face with the name though, Danae. Nice to meet you. I'm Brent Biden. Yeah. Hi. Yep, I'm kind of, I'm trying to find the thing that Kenna just sent me right now. So <laughs> let's see. There it is. Can I, did you send us a specific thing that was that said he was going to present today? What? Yeah, I did that like the, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, I'll just look for all of your emails okay. and see if I can find it. I just called Scott. He's getting on right now. So we'll get started. Oh, there's the schedule. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Okay, is everyone ready to go? Yep. All right. This is Scott Swain from the Roots of Freedom Foundation. Hi, Scott. Oh. Hi, Scott. Hi. How are you today? Good. Oh, good. So you're here with our care commission. Um, you'll have about seven to eight minutes to present with questions. Um, you don't, do you have a PowerPoint to present? No. Okay. All right. I'll just turn the time over to the committee and I'll just let you know when you have a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Can I, I can't see anyone. Am I supposed to be able to see anyone? Well, looks like everyone's not showing themselves. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. So you can hear me okay? We can hear you. We can't see you. Uh, how do I show me? Not that I care. If you don't want to see you me. Have the, <laughs> look, it says start video. Yeah, let's see. It says your this video is do. stopped. Yeah, so it's, uh, take that. Take the red line off of it. Click on it. Yeah. I don't see how to do that. Oh, well. Scott, Scott, if you just tap on your screen, yeah. it'll come up from the bottom and it'll be about in the bottom middle of your screen. Oh. It's kind of a video look, uh, video camera looking icon that'll have a line through it. You click on that, it'll... Yeah, I don't see that. Oh, well, I mean, it's fine. Okay, do you want me to go ahead? Yes, please. Okay, so Cries of Freedom, this is our 14th year, because um, we didn't do 2020, it would have been our 15th year. Um, I think it's a good thing in our community. We have 
pretty much packed houses every time. Uh, it's the first, second, and fourth of July this year. Um, we have three shows every day, one, four, and seven. Uh, pretty much fill the house every time. We have a swearing-in ceremony. I'm just telling you these things for those that, that might not have come to one of our events. Uh, we Anyway, we have a one-hour show. It's very impactful. I think it really captures the message of the 4th of July. I think it really inspires people. Um, anyway, we're uh, recruiting right now. We're going to start rehearsing next week, and uh, we're pretty much off uh, and, and running. So uh, you can find out more about us at criesoffreedom.org. And you can see past shows and see what we're up to and whatnot. But, okay, uh, the reason that we're on this call, the application for the CARE grant. Um, prices have been going up. We found out our sound person moved to Arizona. It's Paul Overson. And we had to get a new sound guy. And he's already, you know, at a minimum, he's going to be seven hundred dollars more than i it was when i first applied for this was, was it was uh it was i put down 1800 now it's 2500 and i've already had to buy two thousand dollars in equipment sound equipment the sound thing is going to be a real challenge i think going forward because people are wanting more more money and unless i can find someone to basically do it at a severe discount, which I found out that Paul Orson was doing it as a discount to us. Um, anyway, so my hope is I applied for the mini grant and I should have probably applied for the mid range, but I was getting cut back every year under the mini range. And so I thought, well, I'll just go for the mini, but I need every penny this year. So please, if you approve this, don't cut me back at all because my costs have gone up. And not only that, my storage fees have gone up from 1300 to almost 1600 You know, and the costumes and the props and just everything, our expenses are just going up, just like, just like everyone else. Um, we would like, well, we put down eighteen hundred dollars for our sound master. That's now twenty five hundred. Put down fifteen forty for our storage unit and sixteen fifty nine for our microphones. Uh, that sixteen fifty nine is just because I had to stop because I was hitting the forty nine ninety nine. I've already paid almost well, a little over two thousand dollars in microphones to purchase for this year because we're trying to just up you know get a few more uh digital mics every every year and then they're some of them are breaking and you know just up uh just maintenance anyway uh the other cost of course the freedom festival will hopefully help us cover that's you know for costumes fight master scripts uh sarah we pay See now he he's hired he hires a spotlight person he hires lighting people um, he has a crew there to help us set it up he has people that come in and clean after every show so we appreciate uh, Adam and we would like to give him more but I just give him whatever I basically have at the end of the year, I pay all my expenses and give them whatever I have. And it's been somewhere between about 800 and 1600. So, and he's, he's been very good and generous. Said just whatever you can, we would appreciate it. So uh, banners, marketing, decorations, expenses for the cast, videotaping the show, props, uh, internet site, you know, those kind of things that are paid for by the Freedom F Festival. So anyway, uh, combination of the two, we got 3,500 from you last year, 4,350 
the year before, I mean, in 2019, 7,750 in 2019, 49.99 in 2018. So it's been going down, but we needed to go back <laughs> to 49.99 minute, you know, which is what we're applying for. So let's see. Uh, I think that's mostly it. Um, Does anyone have any questions for Scott? Hey, Scott, uh, this is Jeff Lamson. Um, do you do any other shows uh, throughout the year or, or just this one show? And by the way, it's amazing. Thanks for doing it. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, no, we just do this, this one. But to be honest, we'd be open to doing more. We're trying to actually set up a sort of a partnership of sorts with American Heritage School and uh, get their cast members, I mean, their kids in our cast and maybe have them help us with our sound. So, and put it on up there, there's Google. So, but yeah, we only do this at this point, this one show. Uh, um, I, I got a question, this is Danae. Are you hi. saying you had to buy all new what is the new sound equipment? Is that because you're having a new sound person or? Well, we've got a new sound person and he's charging more, you know, and, yeah. we have to, and we're buying new mics because we were on this, what's it called? Uh, the lot, lot analog mics. And yeah. of course we have to go digital because there's no, there's no airspace anymore on the analog. So we're going digital and we're just slowly moving over and then there's things that of course when you give mics to kids they break headphones and whatnot and we have to replace them and whatnot so um we know we're gonna have to pay at least twenty five hundred dollars a year for a person to do our sound plus whatever equipment we have, end up having to supplement um or we just pay them a little bit more and don't buy any uh, equipment to say you know, you've got to su supply everything, so. Okay, thank you. We're, we're in time. Any other questions for Scott? All right, thanks, Scott. Okay, thanks a lot. Have, you have a good day. Thank you. See you. See ya. Bye. See you later. Thank okay. you, Scott. You bet. Bye-bye. Okay, next we have um, the Chantanets, and I'm going to find out which who's needs to be in minutes, just one second. So Joanne, do we have who do you have with you today? Um do, do, you, we do you hear me? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so this is Dolores Pedersen. Hi, Dolores. I don't have my video. Where's my oh start video? There it is. Yeah, All right. So do we yeah. have Jackie, Joanne, and Dolores, correct? Correct. That should be it. Yeah. Okay, yes. perfect. Um, so we'll take it away, ladies. You'll have um, about eight minutes to present, and that includes questions. And I'll give you some times. Okay. Joanne, are you first? Oh, I thought you were first. I'll be glad to go first. Hi, I'm Joanne Anderson, and I'm the... I'm the president this year, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about the Chantanets. Um, we have been an organization, a, a group for over 70 years. We, we are second only to the Tabernacle Square, the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square in longevity. We are just a group of women who love to sing. We do not require auditions from people, anyone who loves to sing is welcome to join our choir. We give three main concerts a year. We give a Christmas concert 
and we give a sacred fireside concert that is in March, and then we give a spring concert in May. We do not we, we are we do not charge for any of our performances. We're a nonprofit. Um, what did I want to tell you? Let's see. Our our motto is is I've got to look at my notes for just a minute. Service through song. Um, we are we are a family oriented organization. Our programs are anything that you can bring small children to, and they can enjoy the music. Uh, I'll tell my tell the story as to, of how I happened to get involved with the Chantonettes. I've been in choirs and and sung for ever since I was in a little a little girl, and. I was retired. My husband and I had served a mission for two years and had returned home. And I was diagnosed with a goiter in my neck and my thyroid was nodular. And so the doctor took out my thyroid along with the goiter and he promised to try very hard not to make me hoarse the rest of my life. And so I had surgery in April and in uh, the summertime, my sister says, hey, Joanne, do you want to go join this choir? And so I said, sure. And so we went and, and spent our first night there. And I talked to the director after I had decided to participate and told her what my situation was and asked her, did she think that I could, that this was a good thing for me to do? And she said, don't strain your voice, whatever you do, but yes, come and sing with us. And I've been singing with them ever since. It helped me. My voice came back. We've had we have a lot of people that we we bond together with her. We're making lifelong friends. Uh, we love each other. We support each other. We've had three of our members in this past year who have lost their husbands and are back singing with the choir because music and acceptance and, and love from the group of women that we are. So but we're a great group and we and we appreciate the city of Orem and the care grant which you have provided us with. Thank you. Okay, and I'm sorry I can't get my video. So I'm here, I promise. And I, I've been told to talk about some of the challenges and the successes we've had in the last year, well, or the COVID time. So um, some of them Joanne touched on, We've, we've had a little bit of a challenge um, getting venues because like she mentioned, we, we have our three main concerts for the year and those are fine. But then we also try to reach out and go to um, senior homes and they've been a little reticent since COVID to let us in. But uh, at Christmas time, we were able to, as long as we showed proof of vaccinations, we were able to go to one. And that was a, a, a challenge because not all of our members were vaccinated. So we couldn't take our whole group, but th there was a group of quite a few of us that were able to go to that and uh, provide that, that time for, for those people. And um, then the reduction in venues, we, we normally have five or six con concerts at, at different venues. And because of the COVID restrictions for yeah, these yeah. senior centers. Okay, I don't know what that is, but anyway. So um, we've been restricted a little bit, but several people have let us go and they, we've really enjoyed doing that. Um, and another thing is we we had a little bit of a problem at for our sacred concert. Normally we do what we're allowed into the the um, the tab the tabernacle at um, American Fork, and they weren't allowing any outside people. So we found another venue. Uh, luckily at the last minute and that was very successful we had about 500 people there and we had a, this was for our sacred concert in March we had a guest speaker um, that drew a lot of people and 
it was Brad Wilcox and he was so gracious and stayed afterwards for a, about 45 minutes and talked to people and and I just wanted to say also so we have good a good we had a good speaker there but also it was mentioned by him and by other people in the audience that like Joanne mentioned the women have such a um, a fellowshipping, a strong bond, and a, a love for singing that they emanate, and it can be felt, and you can see it in their faces, and you can hear it, you can feel it, their spirit, their joy of music shines through these concerts, and I'm very, I'm very grateful that that is happening, um, and we have about two minutes. Okay. Um, our, so that was our kind of said that success. One of the things we like to do that I think is a success is to visit the Dan Peterson home, which is for severely handicapped children. And I've heard from people that work there that we're one of the few groups that goes and visits them. And we, we love that. And we feel happy to do that every year. So we're just, I, I, I've been the director and I, I've stepped down this year. And that's another thing that I think is a success that we found a new director and it's gonna be a seamless transition. And we, we're gonna keep going strong and our membership, we've now we've seen them coming back after this illness. They're, they're happy to come back because like Joanne said, it helps them. It, it makes, it fills, fills our, our lives and fills our spirits. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, did I take all of Jackie's time? You did. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Jackie, I'm sorry. Let's just do this real quick. Can you hear me okay? Yes. You can hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that the um, that we, we continue to look forward to it, our new year with renewed positive success. And we... Um, the money that we're requesting for our upcoming year in our organization will be to use to um, have a lot of our, our copies of our music that we need, our choir, till our choir reaches the number of members that we need, that, that um, we've had, we've dropped down several members. It's for a rental of our practice venues, costumes, decorations, and insurance, and our storage unit and marketing. Um, because we didn't have to pay in a passport, the piano gallery for our rehearsals, that's an added expense this year, as well as our new library hall that we'll need to pay for our performances. And I'm stumbling over my words because I'm stumbling over the time. <laughs> it goes by really fast. So does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Jackie. Dave, do you have a question? I do, um, out of all of those, Things, what's the largest cost out of the music storage? Probably the largest cost would be music for, for this coming up here. No, no, but it would be rental. It would be the rental of the, yeah, um, I agree with that. you know, the combined yeah. rental of the, of the library hall plus our um, venue. We have to pay every month, every month now to the piano gallery. We didn't used to. Awesome. Thank you. Dave, did you have a question? No, oh, I think she answered. I just, uh, you know, the, the application for last year, they got $4,999, now right. 9000 So that's a huge, huge increase. Um, and you're charging dues, is that correct? No, we don't. Well, well, we charge dues $50, which has been a yearly due since the chorus began. And so um, most of the big increase, and I know it looks huge, is because of the fact that we have to pay now for every single, um, we used to do it pro gratis, pro stata. And so we didn't used to have to pay. So, and, and on the three programs, are, are they all done in Orem I, or just one or what? No, we don't, we keep it as, as close to Orem as we possibly can. Uh, if we can't get the library hall, then we do it in local churches, but we always try to get Orem when we, when we possibly can. And how many are in your group now? We've got about 45 singers. Four. We were up to 63. So we've had uh, we've had a drop down, but the reason one of the reasons we're asking for more money is so we can get our music built up to 63 pieces for each piece also. 
Okay, thank you. All right, anything else? All right, well, thanks, ladies. Okay, is that Kenna? That's me, Jackie, yes. That's the voice of Kenna, okay. That's my voice, yes. <laughs> All right, well, have All a good right. day, we'll everyone. talk later. Okay, bye. Thank you. thank you, nice to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so the next group we have is the Colonial Heritage Foundation, and I believe there's three people, three or four people. Um, so I will let them in. Daniel, is Bree with you guys? Or Ken, is Bree with you guys? Yeah. Daniel? Okay, let me let her in then, let him in, okay. All right, we have four people today from the Colonial Heritage Foundation. Um, and I'll turn the time, who's presenting? Kim, are you presenting? I'll well, all four of us are speaking, but uh, Gub is going to be showing. So all right. Kim. All right, you have about eight minutes. That includes questions at two minutes. I'm gonna, or when you have two minutes left, I will raise my hand on the reaction and you'll know that's me. Um, and so we'll just go from there. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Well, we're the Colonial Heritage Festival. Um, we're certainly a group that's well known to the CARE program as we've been participating for, I don't know, 10 years or so. So let's just review a few things and let you know what's going to be new for us. So this is the largest American colonial living and reenactment event in the Western United States. Uh, we are entirely a, a volunteer organization. Uh, we have between 20,000 and 30,000 attendees, many, many, many of which are right from here, you know, Orem residents. The, the mission statement of the festival is to preserve the history, skills, culture of the 18th, of 18th century America through engaging, entertaining, and educating 21st century America. Perhaps just a reminder of the fact that this is a, an, an Independence Day celebration. One of the events that we do every year is a dramatic reading of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, for many of our visitors, it's the first time that they've ever actually heard the full text of the Declaration of Independence. And it's, uh, it is an event that, that moves people deeply. It is probably the, the event that we hear uh, most about in the comments that they were touched and moved by this. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that were new recently and are new coming up. And one of those um, events was to host a tea, an afternoon tea, a colonial um, America. Tea was an important part of the culture. It also happened to be um, kind of a sticking point and where there was some um, <laughs> rigorous conversation there. So in the afternoons, we host this colonial experience. We are fortunate with the colonial um, CHF to have people who can interpret first person. And what that means is that individual can actually speak as if they are that person coming from history. It takes quite a skill set and a polish to be able to do this because you're speaking in dialogue, in the language, in the context of that, what's happening in that day. And in around these tables, and we had um, four to five of them last year, you have 21st century mindsets listening to an 18th century persona and it's really a fun and engaging conversation and very popular. And we look forward to that repeating here um, this year. Continuing on with that in the next um, slide, you see this again, the conversation continuing and here's Billy Lee. He was the, the slave assistant of George Washington. And to hear from his perspective, happenings and occurrences of the Revolutionary War and also being the assistant of a beloved character in our history um, and founding father is particularly enlightening. And the, he's part of a father-son duo. And if we move to the next one, those diverse voices continue. And here Johnny takes um, respectfully takes a knee and helps a, a young mind understand how the inner workings of a black powder musket of the era works. It's fun to see the processing and the engaged learning that, that occurs. And I'll pass it on to the next one. And at our festival, we have chosen also to uh, be able to incorporate some of the strong women 
of the 18th century. So last year we were able to have Phyllis Wheatley participate with us. She was a, she's a famous African-American poet. Um, and so that was her character. And then on the next slide, we also knew this year we'll be having Martha Jefferson. So the wife of Thomas Jefferson. And she is a, this character has presented also at Colonial Williamsburg. So she's high quality and just a fantastic opportunity to have her join us at, um, at our, our festival. The next picture is also of a very strong young woman but you can see it's a young woman. This is an apothecary that is very, very well read and understands everything that uh, goes on with, uh, with apothecary items of the 18th century. Um, she has become so popular actually throughout the United States now that, that um, she's been in documentaries with George Washington. She's been at Mount Vernon. She's presented so many places. So we're so privileged to be able to have her um, her, and her quality of knowledge at our festival. Um, the next one, we offer, offered classes that people could take. So we had calligraphy classes. We had fiber arts classes with loose sets. We had classes with colonial games where families could participate um, and not only just participate in the class, but then they could take home the items. They could take home a quill and a pen with ink. They could take home a loose set and practice it those things that they had been engaged and educated in at the festival to continue that, that, that excitement on as they left. We're excited about some of the lesser knowns and the opportunity as the festival has grown to bring in new reenactors. Uh, here we have Bernardo Vicente de Galvez in Madrid, the first Viscount of Galveston, uh, the first Count of Galvez. Uh, this character represents the Spanish influence in the Revolutionary War and how Spain came to the aid of uh, the colonies. And so we have that unique perspective to hear a voice that we don't typically understand and to hear that. So we're, we love having those new, new opportunities to interact with them. Uh, history repeats itself as we hear and, and with the current situation with uh, COVID, uh, it was a perfect opportunity, opportunity to talk about smallpox and how a, a pandemic affected early colonial life and how the inoculations occurred, how they were done, and just fun to watch throughout the festival, these children or adults that had a half a walnut shell tied around their hand, wandering about covering their inoculation site. Uh, we received several different emails or posts on Facebook just telling thank you, saying thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the, the conversations that they have with some of the characters, uh, sharing their excitement to tell other people and to come back again this year or next year. So we are pleased to be partners with uh, the city of Orem and appreciate the care tax that helps to bring about this world-class event to Orem each Independence Day and look forward to um, that opportunity to do that again uh, this year and years to come. And we're ready to take any questions. Yes. Does anyone have any questions? We hope that you've all been able to attend in the past. And if not, we hope you attend because it's an amazing event. We love it, it's awesome. Thank you. Okay. If you don't have any more questions or any other questions, thanks for joining right. us tonight. Guys. Thank you. We look forward to hearing from you. Okay, have you a great much. day. Oh. Great evening. Bye. Thank, Bye -bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Okay, next we have Aubrey from the Grassroots Shakespeare. Um, and I will let her in. There's some other people, so let me find out from her who they are. Just a second. Hi, Aubrey. Hello. Is Drake and Gary with you? Yes, they are. They okay. are me. Okay, let me <laughs> admit them in then. Okay. So you'll have about eight minutes to present with questions. At, when you have two minutes left, I'll raise my hand. Um, and you'll know that on the little hand raise, you'll know you'll have two minutes left. So this is Aubrey, Gary, and Drake from Gra Grassroots Shakespeare, and we'll turn it, the time over to you. And you can share your screen if you need to. So thank you. 
All right. So hello, like she said, we're the Grassroots Shakespeare Company. I am Aubrey. I'm the Managing Director. I'm joined today by Drake Hansen, our Educational Tour Artistic Director, and Gary Argyle, our Music Director. So let me share my screen, and we have a little presentation for you. Okay. Do you see that? Is it any? <laughs> yeah, we can't see it. Do you just do it under share screen? Oh, there you go. Is that is it there now? Okay. All right, here we go. So we are the Grassroots Shakespeare Company. It's loading. Here we go. So um, as the Grassroots Shakespeare Company, we're an ensemble of multiple distant multidisciplinary artists. So all of our actors are also the directors. They are the costume designers. They're the props managers. They're the stage managers. Every, they do everything because back in Shakespeare's day, it would have been that true. So we try to really recreate that in other Jacobian staging techniques. So what we do with the CARE grant every year is a part of it is put towards our summer tour for the performances that we have here in Orem. And then um, the bulk of it, we put in our educational tour program, which um, I'll let Drake talk about in just a moment. So with summer tour last year, it was our first time back in the parks since the pandemic. So we had a bit shorter of a tour, but we were 50% in Orem and 50% in Provo. So, but we, we always stay here <laughs> because we just wanted to dip our toe back in the water and see how everyone was feeling post pandemic. Well, I guess we're still in it, but you know what I mean? So as we are approaching 2022 summer tour, um, you'll see we have a more, more robust season. Um, this is what our tour looked like <laughs> back in 2019. So we are going back to, we are touring up and down the state, notably Moab Arts Festival and Ogden Arts Festival. Those, that's how far we've gone <laughs> before. So but we also stay here close to home and we're going to be doing about four to five shows this summer here in Orem. So that's what we use for summer tour allocations. Then um, Drake, can I turn it over to you to talk about where we use the bulk of it with our educational tour school program here in Orem? Yeah, sure. Um, so like, like Aubrey said, a lot of the funding that we get from this grant we use for our educational tour, which is where we'll do a um, pretty cut down minimal version of a script so we can take a Shakespeare play into elementary, middle and high schools. Um, we've also gone to a lot of the boys and girls clubs that meet after school um, at schools in Orem. Um, and we'll, we'll also have that available to people outside of the city of Orem, but thanks to the Orem Care Grant, we're able to take these shows into the schools um, at, I at no cost to them. Um, so not only do we bring a show, but we also bring a workshop where our actors can work with the students. This is optional. This Not every school takes this opportunity, but we love to be able to teach the students about both our own process and how our process is informed by the original um, Jacobian and Elizabethan staging techniques. And we also see when we teach the students to think about Shakespeare in this way, it makes them engage even more with our productions. Um, but I also just love our productions are already so designed to be um, accessible. Uh, a big part of the original Jacobian staging techniques was direct audience address. So rather than what we're used to in a lot of more realism of the actors are talking to each other and pretending they're in this enclosed room and the audience is this fourth wall um, we completely ignore that. So a lot of the monologues is talking to the students and they really engage with that and gain a deeper understanding of these texts when we bring them. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Drake. Yeah. Um, so as we have gone across our tour so far, um, and we've already seen over 800 students and the tour is still going. So you'll see here um, different schools choose to do different things. As you'll see in this picture, this was, you know, a featured class that got to participate in the workshop and the show. As you can see, Orem Junior High, Cascade Elementary, that was a full assembly for the whole school. So based on what the school 
needs and wants um, will perform for whoever. And 800 plus, we still have many shows and we just are going to go to the Orem Library in September and do a workshop and a show. So we are, we are not done yet, but it's super exciting and it's super fun. And you can see, um, let me go back to these numbers really fast. Um, we are going to be adding more and more shows in 2023. This is our first educational tour back in the schools since the pandemic. And so um, as we work back up our audience base and remind them, hey, we're still here, we're still doing this. Um, everybody's really excited to jump on board and have us come tour to their school. So that is our presentation. Let me stop my screen. And what, what can we answer for you? What questions might you have about the Grassroots Shakespeare Company? Oh, and Gary, if you'd like to share anything, Gary's our music director. He goes with us up and down the state and into every single school with us playing music, underscoring the entire performance. Yeah, we have live music for the show too. That's that's a thing we do. <laughs> yeah, and the students love Gary. <laughs> um, this is Danae. I have a question. Um, can you tell us what 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 plays are you putting on? But but which ones are you doing? Do you have a repertoire? Are you doing just a few or what are you doing? So as far as summer tour goes, this summer we'll be performing Cymbeline. So that's a fun one that we've never done before. But with the educational tour, we are currently performing Romeo and Juliet with a four person cast. So that's also really fun and engaging because they are tossing costumes left and right, changing characters so many times. I don't think that any kid is not watching what is going on because it is, it's a madhouse up there. It's so fun. Um, but last, uh, <laughs> in 2019, we performed Macbeth, the Scottish play. We're not in a theater, so we're okay. But so with the educational tour, we do have a repertoire of um, A Midsummer Night's Dream is probably what we're going to be doing this next season. Mm -hmm. And Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, we're thinking about putting uh, Julius Caesar and Hamlet in there. Basically ones that you might get introduced to, mm -hmm. you know, ranging from fifth grade into high school. So we really are trying to line up with our English teachers to see what play will you be focusing on this next season mm -hmm. to see if we can better help implement that in their classrooms so that they can see the show while they're learning about it. But mm -hmm. that's just one of the many exciting things we're trying to do as we grow and grow and grow this program. And I'm yeah. so glad that it's back. It, it's really exciting to be in the schools. Yeah, it's really and, great. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you, thank you for having us. We're so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, thank you. Nice thank to meet you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, our next presenter is the Viva Brazil Cultural Center. They have not come in yet, so I'm going to give them a call if you just want to hold on for a minute. She didn't answer, so hold tight for just a minute. Have your have a little break. Anybody have any questions? Why we're on? Why I'm trying to find her? Nope, doing good.
Um, well, we have a break after this, so we'll wait a few more minutes and see if she gets on. If not, um, we'll take our break and then we'll come back at seven for the Orm Corral. Um, let me see, I'll try to call her again. Yeah, it goes directly to voicemail. I sent her an email as well. So um, if she, yeah, if you guys want to take your break, if she does come on, we'll let her present. If not, we'll have to reschedule her for later or next week, I guess. So um, yeah, if you guys want to take your break, just come back at seven, about probably a couple minutes before seven and we'll have the Orm Corral. So thank you. Thank you.
All right, let me t let me know when everyone is back. I still hear Kenna. This is Bren. All right, thanks, Bren. I'm back. This is Jeff. I'm right. back. This is this is Danae. I'm back. Hi, thanks. This is Shona. I'm back. Hi. <laughs> Spencer's back. Yeah. Laura. Thanks, guys. Stacy back. Well, I called, emailed, and text the other people and haven't heard back yet, so. Thanks for doing everything you can to, to follow up though, Kenna. Appreciate You're welcome. That. I just feel bad, you know, I always worry that they went to our, went to spam or something. <laughs> Stay Siri back. Okay, I think we'll get started. Um, we have Dell Morris from the Orm Corral. He is in the waiting room. I will let him in and then I will share the screen, his screen. Hi, Dell, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, are you the only one that's gonna be presenting tonight? I am here in and sitting next to me is the president from next year. Oh, uh, awesome. Jill. Uh, so we've got the two of us sitting in the same room here. Oh, great. Well, I will. You said, do you want to share your screen? Or you want me to show the PowerPoint? Um, I have a, the PowerPoint set up here. Whatever's okay. the easiest for you, uh, for me to control it or you to control it. Probably either way. Have, why don't you control it? It's probably easier. OK, do I then go full screen and then? Yeah, just hit share screen at the bottom. And then it should be at you spell to bring it up. Perfect. You'll have about eight minutes to present. Um, I will raise my okay. hand when when you're at six minutes. So okay. All right. We'll turn the time over to Dell and Jill from the Orm Corral. Thank you. That sounds great. Hello, how are you guys this evening? I hope you're able to see and hear us okay. Uh, my name is Del Morris and on behalf of the Orem Corral, thank you for having us here this evening. Uh, this is Jill de Graffenreid. She's next year's president. And so she's here watching how we do this and, and uh, she'll be doing this next year as well. Uh, we are very grateful to the Orem Care Grant support this year and previous years that we've received it. Uh, we are a group of people from the community that love to sing and share our talent with others. We've been singing since uh, 2010 with currently 75 members and 14 board members, 11 of which are volunteer positions. Our music director, our assistant director, and our accompanist are paid positions, and our rehearsals are held on Thursday evenings at Orem High School. Uh, the focus of Orm Corral is to inspire, uplift, and unite our community through beautiful music. The Orm Corral sings a wide variety of musical styles, including popular music, spirituals, folk songs, patriotic pieces, and classical works. 
As a choir, we believe we best serve our community by sharing a heightened musical experience to be enjoyable and inspiring to all. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and social distancing brought unique challenges to choirs over the past two years. In our 2022 season, we were finally able to meet together again, and we held 36 live rehearsals and four concerts, including our upcoming summer patriotic concert that will be on June 3rd, uh, 2022. Uh, we strictly followed all local health guidelines for masking and social distancing. We are very grateful to have talented professional directors and accompany us to keep us engaged, enthused and choose beautiful music and have the skills to help us improve our musical talents. These are the only paid positions that we have in the choir and we'll come back to this cost in a moment. Russell Oliphant, our assistant directors, Ashley Gunn. Uh, led by degree and their combined yearly salaries uh, total $6,750. So that's the top part of the cost that you see on this slide. Uh, we rent the from high school for and we often perform in the auditorium or at Library Hall, University Place, Summerfest, and local churches. These rental fees total about $1,875 each year. Other costs include payroll taxes and liability insurance. Sometimes we incur publicity and advertising fees, which can vary. Nearly all of the money we spend goes directly back into our community and the total yearly budget of the choir is about $12,000. Uh, last year, we received a total of $4,990 from the CARE grant. Our directors and accompany salaries are paid directly out of the CARE grant fund. And the remainder of their salaries and other expenses member dues about $20 a month. Because the CARE grant covers most of the professionals, we are able to keep our concerts free and member dues reasonable. Uh, this year we've asked for an e increase in funding from the Orem CARE grant. An increase in funding will allow us to give small raises to our three professional leaders. Uh, they haven't received a raise for, I think we decided five or six years, and we'd like to give them a five to 10% raise if we could. It would also enable us to offer more scholarships to residents who are unable to use. We currently have three scholarships that are going now, and we invite people who are unable to pay. And it would allow us to increase our social media. Orem residents. About 10% of our members are from other communities around Orem because no one around us offers exactly what we do. We provide a place for community members to continue to develop their musical talents. We have a wide range of ages in our members and members are not required to audition, memorize, or purchase music. It's a wonderful place for people to share their talents in a non-stressful atmosphere. If people enjoyed choir in high school or college, we provide an opportunity to practice and perform in the same way. In fact, if any of you would like to join our choir, please feel free to join us on Thursdays. Uh, we serve the Orem community. All our concerts are free. We sing a variety of music that appeals to the general population of Orem. And we are expanding our audience by performing at local care centers and participating in community events. We provide a sense of identity and community for the city of Orem. We represent Orem in performing at city festivals, holidays, and special events. We serve Orem residents in an enjoyable, enriching musical experience. We look forward to participating in Orem Summerfest celebration and performing at the new Orem Library Hall. Our goal is to encourage community unity through singing and share high quality chorale music with the uh, Orem community. The Orem Chorale is not just our choir, it belongs to the whole Orem community and it benefits us all. We request that you continue to support your community choir, the Orem Chorale, through your generous and very much appreciated CARE grant. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present and please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. So um, other than the care, care dollars from Orem, where else are you getting your money other than the dues? Um, all, of, all of our ex, ex other money comes from dues. Well, that's not true. All 
from month. Uh, we have a from Amazon Isle program. It's um, local um, community organization growth program. Both of those are in the two to three hundred dollar range over the course of the entire year. So those two fundraisers, small fundraisers, um, provide us a small amount of funds. Everything else comes from dues from the members. And the dues was twenty dollars. That was correct. Twenty dollars a month. And like I said, we currently have three members who come and are on scholarships. Um, we also have student memberships, which are $10 a month. So if people are students, either college or high school students, uh, it's $10 a month for those members. And um, then we have several scholarships and I'd like to be able to offer more. We've encouraged people to just please come and sing with us, even if they're unable to afford the $20 monthly dues. Any other questions? And you guys have a concert, right? Or was that was that last night? When when was that? We did have a concert just this last Friday. That was our spring. Oh, concert. Friday. That's when it was, right? Yes, it was this last Friday. It was our spring concert. We performed a, a variety of um, spring and Easter pieces. So the theme of our concert was Easter this year. And then our final concert will be, uh, we're actually going to be at University Place uh, Mall, uh, where we'll be doing our patriotic and summertime concert. So that'll be our final concert of the season. We usually take a break during June, July, and August. So we can follow the school pretty closely. A lot of people vacate three months during, the, uh, we don't meet for practice and concert. So. Any other questions, anyone? All right, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us tonight. We appreciate you guys and everything you do. Okay, have a good day. Thank good you. Day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next uh, people that are up for the Garden Valley Pipe Band, they're not here either, so I'll give them a call. He didn't answer. I will try to text them. Um, Jessica Hing's here from the Wasatch Contemporary Dance Company, so I think I'll have her go ahead and then I'll keep looking for the Garden Valley Pipe Band. Will that work for everybody? 
Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Yep. Hi, Jessica, do you mind, do you want to present a little bit early? Um, sure. All right. Well, we're, are you ready right now? Yeah, I can do it, right? Okay, now. awesome. We are, our last person didn't show up, so we might as well go ahead. Okay. So this is Jessica from the Wasatch Contemporary Dance Company. Um, you'll have eight minutes to present and then after, and then um, with questions. And at six minutes, I'll just raise my hand and let you know it's at six minutes. So. Um, I'll turn the time over to you. If you need to share your screen, you can do that. Yes, I'll go ahead and share. Share. Okay, we all see that? Is that good? <laughs> you want to turn up your volume just a bit? Um, turn up my volume. Is that better? Can you hear me still? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So yes, great. We are at Wasatch Contemporary Dance Company. Um, we've been around in the area for 12 years now. Um, and we do rehearse in Provo. That's where most of our rehearsals happen. But we have a strong presence in the city of Orem. And we have for many years um, as we perform and educate in the city of Orem. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about what we do, who we are. Um, our number one goal is to create meaningful and innovative dance. So we're not here to solely entertain, although we love to do that as well, but we really like to create dance that has social impact that can make people kind of open their minds and their eyes and start conversations with other people and maybe change their viewpoints so that we can all become more creative and compassionate in our community. Um, and we think dance is a great, um, a great vessel for doing that. We love to collaborate with other artists. So we really try to meet other artists in the community and um, together create really interesting and multifaceted works. And we're also known for interacting with our audience. We really love to bring uh, patrons into the art making process and involve them. Um, and it makes dance really um, interactive and, and makes it so it can truly change people when we interact with them and try to include them in the process. Um, we educate, so we, we have lots of classes, master classes, uh, workshops that we offer for all ages. Um, some of those include the library classes that we do at the Orem Library and um, all the way on up to professional workshops for adults. Um, lastly, we're working hard to make dance a viable career option in Utah County. We are the only professional contemporary dance company in Utah County. Um, a lot of, you'll find a lot of companies, small and large in Salt Lake County, but we're really trying hard to bring dancers here and keep dancers here. And we're, we're doing a pretty good job. We've had dancers relocate from even other states to come join us here in Utah County um, because they see dance becoming an important part of the community here. And that's an important goal that we have. Um, how are we currently serving Orem residents? Uh, as I said, we provide professional dance training. So these are dancers who have completed university degrees in dance before they come to us and we have them from all over the country now. Um, we have we have a main company and a secondary company so all together we have about 15 dancers at a time and there's usually one one to four dancers just depends on the year um, but one to four dancers come from the city of Orem so we're grateful that we're able to provide that kind of training for professionals that live in the area including Orem. Um, we like to provide meaningful performances that are diverse for um, residents of the city of Orem. And we love how Orem is invested in bringing the rich cultural um, experiences to Orem. So they're, they're enjoying that kind of rich culture that you'd find in a big city um, here in Orem with that, that hometown feel. So we really appreciate what Orem's doing to try to bring uh, diverse arts and culture into their city. Um, and like I was talking about before, we do provide classes and workshops of all, for people of all ages in Orem. Um, the photos you see at the bottom, one is from a performance we did at the Woodbury Art Museum a few years ago. And the other is from one of our many library classes that we've taught at the Orem Library. And we just love teaching those. We've done those for years now. And we come twice a year and, and teach those for free. Um, and we also work with high school dance programs in the area. I was recently with Mountain View High School and Orem High School. Um, and we 
frequently work with students from both those schools and others um, to just try to increase the dance education that's here in this area um, in, yeah, in the city of Warren. So the, the funds that we are requesting for this year will make it possible for us to finally get to perform in the Orem Library Hall. We tried really hard last year and it just wasn't quite ready for us to rent it when we needed it. So we're hopeful that it can work out this year for November. Um, and we're just asking for the funds that will help us rent for three days um, and then hire the sound and light technician that we need. Um, a three-day rental is ideal um, because that allows us to do like our tech and lighting for the first day and then do shows on the second and third days. And that just makes it a lot um, more smooth of a show, a lot more fluid, and we're able to work out a lot of those bugs as opposed to just like jumping in and and presenting a show right away and not having that that first day for tech and lighting rehearsals that really helps make the difference in a professional show. Um, there are lots of other expenses associated with this show that we'll be covering ourselves through earned income and other um, donations and such. So you'll see a list there of um, the pay that we'll provide for dancers, choreographers, administrators. We will cover costuming, advertising, and general operating expenses to, to name a few. Um, so we're, we're asking for just a small portion of what this full project will, will take to, um, to be accomplished. Um, but we love performing in the city of Orem and hope that we'll get to continue to do that for years to come. And we just thank you for the support you've given to us in past years and grateful that we can, um, that we can continue to work with the city of Orem. We do love being a part of your cultural diversity. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Thanks, Jessica, for your great presentation. Um, I noticed that last year, uh, if, if I'm reading this correctly, that your organization received um, $3,900, but you only used 523. Was that because we're of COVID? <laughs> no, we're, we're still using it. So what happened was the funds were transferred to a show we're doing in June. So oh. we used a small portion right now, but that will, help, that will mostly cover the rental of the Reagan Theater and then payment for a few of the artists whose work are being presented in that show. But okay. it just, I think we, we asked for the money for November of last year, and then we just ended up changing some of our scheduling. So it's all, being it. planned, it's all being used. It'll just be done by June 4th. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Jessica. Thanks for being willing to go early too. I appreciate it. That was great. Okay, okay, have a thank time. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So I got a hold of the Garden Valley Pipe Band. He got off work late, so we'll put him at the end, and then we'll just. Um, it looks like our next two presenters are here, so I'll just let them in. And um, we next have have Leslie Ireland from the um, Utah Baroque Ensemble. So I'll let her in. Leslie, you're on mute, Leslie. Can you hear us, Leslie? Can you hear me, Leslie? Maybe she thought she was just going to present <laughs> later. So I'll put her back in the um, 
put in the waiting room and I'll bring in Michael Barr from the Utah Shakespeare Festival. Hi, Michael, how are you? I am good. Would you like you guys to- way ahead of schedule? We, well, we kind of are and kind of are, but would you go, would you be happy to go ahead right now? I would. I'm going to close this door so I'm not interrupted. Oops, hang okay. on. My okay, that'd works. be great. And if you need to share your screen or whatever you need to do. I will be sharing screen. Okay. And, uh, so and you'll thank have you. I just about... know somehow these, I know how these things go sometimes. So I thought uh, hey, I was here early. Okay. I just want to thank you that I'm not driving in a car all the way up there. I love it. Right. Well, we want, there. you know, we'd like you to, you know, every once in a while you have to come to Utah County though. I know. So. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you'll have about eight minutes to present. At six minutes, I'll just hold up the, my hand. You'll see a little hand in my, and then you'll have two more minutes after that. Sweet. So Sweet. thank you for your willingness to present early and here, and we'll turn the time over to you. Okay, fantastic. And uh, uh, I will be sharing screen. Have I got that already? You, you should be able to share. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Um, hi, welcome. Uh, it's so good to see you all. Uh, I, re I think some of you may have seen some of this presentation before. Uh, I've got a PowerPoint. I'm going to move through it really, really quickly so we have to, enough time for questions later, later on. And uh, I'm assuming that the darkened screens I have that everybody's listening and we're just fine to move ahead. Are we good? Yeah? Got it. Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Michael Barr. I'm the education director here at the festival. And uh, I'm going to pull my screen up here. Can you see that? Yeah? Let me move this here and got it. Open up. Everybody see that? Yep, fantastic. Uh, so this is just a brief overview about the Shakespeare in the Schools touring production, which is what we're asking uh, the funds for. Uh, we serve a number of different places. And I'm gonna go really, really quickly here. Uh, we, uh, we cultivate creative community through Shakespeare and instructional play with emphasis on low and moderate income populations. And what we basically do is we bring a 75 minute production of Shakespeare. This is professional actors. Um, it's, there's a 15 minute talk back following it. And then we have three workshops, Shakespeare text, stage combat and improvisation that we have. And here's a nice little, can you hear that? Yes. There's a brief overview of what it looks like when we load in, load out, do the play, have the talkbacks, et cetera. So we go to six states, um, 25,000 students that we serve, 44% uh, of them receive free and reduced lunch as we travel, and 22% of the shows are produced uh, free of charge. Um, what we've done over the past couple of years is, uh, and, and I have a very strong relationship with Orem. Uh, I went to Orem High School. I was in Orem Junior High. I'm a Jerry Ellison kid. I've always loved Orem. My mom and dad are still there. Um, we travel all up and down the Wasatch Front, but it's been important to me that we have a strong connection with, uh, with Orem and uh, with Utah Valley. So we did the Tempest. Uh, we performed at Timpanogos High School. We also performed at Northridge Elementary and at Orem Elementary, and we've maintained a strong relationship with the students at Orem Elementary. The next year, we took Every Brilliant Thing out, which is a one-person show, which is an anti-depression uh, uh, kind of suicide prevention show, and we served 2,600 students uh, in the Orem area, both at Timpanogos and at Orem High School and Mountain View High School as well. And then, Oh, COVID hit us. Oh my gosh. Uh, hence that lovely photo that we hear. So we had to pivot and uh, we, we 
took, we actually had professional actors here. We provided a virtual offering, we videotaped it, and then we distributed uh, to about 5,000 students through that one. We're so excited that we're back on the road in this last year. We were able to perform Much Ado About Nothing, and we performed in two spaces. And I'm really excited about this story. We went to Orm Elementary, the new library hall. Um, we were performing there for John Hancock and a wonderful um, programming librarian by the name of Nathan Robinson. He's a Robinson. He's at uh, Orm Elementary. He walked to uh, uh, Orm Library and he said, this is incredible. Uh, can we do public shows with this? And uh, he talked to our company manager. I reached out to him. Uh, we would love to do public shows with this. That's what I've been trying to do over the past couple of years is not just go to the schools. We do a nice little set down. And he was really, really thrilled with the professionalism of our staff. And I think there's a real great opportunity of sitting down for free in library hall and being able to perform for the elementary schools and then in the evening have a show there. So basically our plan is for next year, we'd love to get to Orem High, Mountain View High, Timpanogos High School, and then also an invitation to Orem Elementary Schools that can attend during the school day at Library Hall and then public performances in the evenings. And that is our quick overview. Let me stop the share right here so I can see you in the eyes and ask you have any questions. Uh, are there any questions that you have about what our program is and what we'd like to do in bringing in uh, this into the city of Orem? The show next year will be Othello, but generally our productions, while Othello sounds like a really heavy and meaty thing, we actually find that elementary schools fourth on up and junior high schools work really, really well uh, with the touring productions. Any questions? Do you have any questions for me about the Shakespeare Festival or Shakespeare in the Schools uh, touring program? And I'm not sure where I am, Kenna, but I'm assuming I'm at about five minutes. Yeah? Yes, you, well, you've got three minutes left. Perfect. You're right. Questions? Did you, did you receive 1500 uh, last year from the CARE? I, I think, I don't, actually, we didn't receive anything from CARE during the Julius Caesar year because we didn't actually go out. Um, we, we hunkered down, uh, because of COVID and we weren't allowed to get out into the schools at that time, which is where I said, we're going to do a video thing. So we actually, um, we were granted money and then we opted not, I believe. And then this next year, uh, we said, nope, we're, we're going to be able to get out and we're going to be able to get in there. And so I actually think, uh, the year before that, it was, uh, it was Dang around it. three what was that? I think it was two thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah, it was two thousand uh, dollars. How was that used? How is that money used? Perfect. Um, so the tour is already built, and we use uh, other funds to do that. So all we're asking from uh, from Orem Cares is for the lodging and the transportation in the Orem area. So that's just asking for the lodging. It's not paying the actors' fees. It's not paying any of their salaries. It's not paying for the building of the set or the director or anything. The show is intact, and that just allows us to stay within the Orem area and perform within the Orem area. Does that answer that question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, it's what, what I'm trying to build uh, within the Orem area is something similar that we do in the Ogden area. We've been in the Ogden area for about 20 years, serve multiple schools, and then a public performance in the evening. And we use... Uh, uh, funds from other sources to get this show in there. And then uh, we just use the funds to house the, the 10 company members while we're in the area there. Other questions? Forgive my enthusiasm. I'm sometimes I'm even through a screen. <laughs> I, right. I, is that good? I think any other questions for Michael? No, sounds great. Great. Let All me do right. a quick, I'll do a quick closure. Uh, I love, uh, we have similar programs down here in Cedar City with RAP, RAP tax and Orem Cares tax. I think it's very important that uh, things like CIRA and the HAIL and those really, really great programs, which is why we ask just uh, that small amount of money so that we can continue bringing the program into the schools. And I'm really excited about the opportunity that it could be afforded by a longer stay at Library Hall. So that's essentially what we're asking for. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Right. Have a good rest of your evening. We'll make Thanks, you Michael. Come.
We'll make you come out next year. Just kidding. Uh, I wouldn't mind it. Uh, I come up, I have it, and then I pop on over and I have uh, a good soup of Zupas across the way and uh, get to see my friends at CIRA and have a great time. So well, that's thank awesome. you. Okay, thank you. What did you graduate from Orem? Thank you. Uh, I graduated from, uh, I, I actually, I went uh, a year at Orm High and then I was in the first year at Mountain View High School. So I'm oh. actually a Bruin. And then oh. my dad moved to Richfield, Utah. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, and so I graduated from Richfield and left oh. the great city of Orem. Probably wouldn't have ended up at SUU otherwise. But oh, uh, right. yeah, I'm a, I consider myself a tiger and a Bruin. Oh, that's good. All right, thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. Okay, we'll try Leslie again. And I'll try to turn this off. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Leslie, can you hear us? Leslie, can you hear us? Are you there, Leslie? Yes, I am here. Oh, there you are. Okay. How are you today? Okay, I guess I had to accept that I was being recorded. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay. So you're here with our, our care committee um, and you can share your screen if you need to. You'll have eight minutes. Okay. Um, you'll have eight minutes to present and um, I will put my hand up at six minutes so you'll know that you have a few more minutes to go. Okay. All right. Well, it's good to, to talk to you today and can't start it. Oh. Okay. Hang on. I, I, I'm. This is a first. <laughs> so down um, at the bottom of your screen it says share screen. Yes, I don't. There we go. Okay. Yay. Okay. So. So I. I am. Am I sharing now? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Now. I am the president elect for the Utah Baroque Ensemble. And um, we appreciate all the support you've given to us in the past. And we wanted to let you know that your contributions to us in the CARE grant have made the difference between us being um, viable and not viable. And we really appreciate that. This is our little choir. Um, and it has shrunk quite a bit in the last two years because of COVID. Um, I gave you, I, I sent an invitation to some of you, I think all of you, um, by email last week about the concerts we're giving. And I was hoping perhaps some of you were able to come and see us. We performed last night and it was very fun. We performed at the Cascade Stake Center. And, um, we had a smaller choir than what you see here. We had half of that number of people, but we worked really hard to, um, per, to give out beautiful music. Our main theme in life is to have, to present sacred um, historical music in the Baroque period, the Renaissance period, and then modern choral music. And it's pretty much classical. Once in a while, we'll throw in something fun, like an, um, a, something lighter. But um, our, our, our choir has been going for 34 years. It's been directed by the same director, Martha Sargent. We have now 24 singers and four instrumentalists that have been helping us this year. Every year we give five concerts in Orem, four by the choir, the UBE, the Utah Baroque Ensemble, and one by high school students. And that just happened last month. Um, we give other concerts throughout the, the county and Salt Lake plus occasional tours. Um, we've gone to Europe a few times. And when we were there, we tried to 
spread the news that um, we were representing Utah as a cultural art center um, and tried to really to make Utah proud of us. So you can see at the bottom that um, most recently we went to Germany and we that tour included going to Leipzig where Johann Sebastian Bach um, taught and composed most of his life. Um, we love Bach music and we always include it. We have 13 members of the Utah Baroque Ensemble who are Orem residents and these are who they are, perhaps you're friends with any of them. And um, last night all of these people were there except for Cynthia Richards. So we're still quite Utah or I mean Orem oriented, but even when our numbers get low. We have some planned activities for the next year that involve Orem. Um, every year we give a Christmas concert at the Cascade State Center on 481 um, Center Street. And we're planning on doing that this coming November. We're also doing a Christmas sing-along concert at the Orem Library. We've done that for many, many years. Last um, December, we were able to do that, but we, because of COVID, we didn't dare have a sing-along. So we just gave a little concert and we enjoyed doing it for the first time as a choir in the Ashton Life um, Recital Hall, Concert Hall. We had an attendance of over 100 people and it was um, nice to use the risers. We appreciated Nate Robison from the library helping us and we helped um, pay, for, well, we enjoyed, the, we enjoyed that experience. In February next year, we're gonna have a, a master class for high school students at the Piano Gallery in Orem. And that's where we have a master teacher come and teach high school and junior high school students how to play in authentic Baroque style or how to sing in the authentic Baroque style. And then they are allowed to um, proceed and, and enter a scholarship that we always have for it. It's called the Baroque Student Scholarship Recital. And um, that happens a month later. And there's a lot of um, winnowing down of all the contestants to have finalists. And then in April, we will have a concert of mostly Easter music. This is the winner of this year's um, Levente Medvedsky Student Scholarship Competition, Alina Barron. And she performed beautifully last night. That was part of her award or her experience for joining us and winning. Um, she performed the Bach Partita number no. three and did a perfect job. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have um, we had eight, nine, fine, nine participants who were finalists and Alina was the winner. We gave her an award of $500, an award to all the other eight finalists of $100. And there were also a brother and a sister of these finalists who performed in, as exhibition participants and they um, did a fine job that night. Um, this is a clip of Madison Marshall at the library when she won her uh, competition in 2016. And the harpsichord was provided by one of our choir members who has a harpsichord and he just trots it around and, and uses it for the Baroque competition. This is an article that was put in the Daily Herald telling us the results of competition. And at the bottom paragraph, um, we have Orem Care Program as one of some of our sponsors and we really appreciate that. Past support from you um, has been much appreciated 2021, we received $4,500 from you. And those funds allow us to pay our director and our organist, and then other um, extra instrumentalists who help to accompany a lot of the Bach pieces that we play and sing. It helps us to purchase our choir music and our supplies. And it also helps us to hold activities such as that student scholarship competition. And we don't use the care funds for the prizes that we mentioned, which was um, $1,300, but to help defray the other costs 
of that competition, like renting the recital hall, helping the um, library to the piano. We went in half and half with them. And um, <clears throat> so that's, oh, I wanted to tell you that um, we held the competition also in the Ashton Library, and it went very, very well. We had another audience of over 100 people. Um, this is us on our tours um, in wonderful Europe. And here is us, here we are playing, uh, singing the Paco Bell Mall. So, um, we really are excited to um, to ask for this grant again, and to invite you to that comp to the next recital. If you receive the email, you'll have that address. And, um, know where we're singing next Sunday. Anyone have any questions for Leslie? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you evening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, you guys, you've almost made it. We have one more, one more presentation. This is um, by the Garden Valley Pipe Band. Um, sometimes they perform for us, so we'll see what happens tonight. So um, I'll let James and Scott in. Kenneth, thanks for kindly keeping everything moving along. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So James and Scott, are you here? Uh, yes, ma'am. James is here. Yes, okay. Scott is here. Okay, there you are. Hey, thanks for letting us come tonight. Oh, you're welcome. We were. I was like, oh no, they they've gone. I've gone to spam or something. So. <laughs> well, um, you have eight minutes to present. Um, you can share your screen if you'd like. Great. Um, Let me go ahead and do that. I'll put up my hand and let you know that you're at six minutes. I'll put up my hand and let you know, and we'll just turn the time over to you. Great. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Uh huh. And you can hear me just fine? Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us tonight. I know this has been a long night for all of us, so we won't take too much of your time, but we're really grateful to have this time to meet and talk to you about the Orem Care Grant. It has positively impact Orem, it's positively impact our band, and it's positively impact the students that we've been working with. So I wanted to briefly just walk through, again, I'm Scott Gilbert, I've got James Moyer on the line, and we just wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Garden Valley Pipe Band. I wanna tell you a little bit about who we are, some of the challenges we've faced, and of course, the opportunities we've got going forward. So we are a 501c3, we were founded in 2015. So the goal of the band is to promote, inspire, perform, educate. I love the acronym PIPE since it relates to who we are as a bagpipe group. Uh, anyone who's interested in learning to play the bagpipes and the drums. And I don't say it's the niche audience because we're into it, we love it but it's surprising how many people in the community come out of the woodwork and are excited. I've wanted to learn all my life or I've got a kid that's interested in digging in or I've got a young adult, but it's really fun to help contribute to the culture and arts in Orem. And so what we offer is free bagpipe and drum class lessons to the community. And maybe free comes with the price. <laughs> We've got great experience, but we need help. <laughs> Um, but we do perform in concerts and performances, and we, re we really do contribute to the vibrant cultural arts in Orem. Just wanted to quickly show you some of the pictures that we have from our band and students that are participating. And if you notice, there's kind of a theme. We've got older people, and I fall into that boat. We've got younger people, and we've got even children that come out to learn to play the drums and the bagpipes. And it's just fun to have this mix of older and younger. It's fun to see youth progress from learning a new instrument to getting dressed up and performing 
for concerts and parades and things that we work on, I'd love to see the mentorship that happens between new students and teachers that come in. And as a musician, James, you could probably echo this. It's fun to have a skill and to be able to share it. And to me, that's rewarding to know that I'm making a difference in the community. Plus, I love it too. The music's always great. <laughs> so some of the challenges we've, we've had is because of COVID, um, we're not able to raise operating funds this past year through our normal concerts, performances, and parades. We have started our free classes again. Um, and that's gone really well. James, I don't know if you want to touch on that. The number of students we had was really overwhelming. It was awesome. Yeah, over the over the few years that we'd been running pre-COVID, we'd kind of got into this rhythm where we would have kind of groups that had progressed a little ways. And then the next year, a new group would come in. So we kind of had this multi-tiered teaching thing going where there were sort of advanced students, students partway through and brand new students every time we started a semester. And because of COVID, everything went to zero. And so we suddenly, when we started again uh, this spring, had this massive group of all brand new people. And it was uh, a little a little bit scary at first just because there were so many in the room, right? But um, also really encouraging that COVID is definitely not going to have killed the group. We've got a huge new crop of people now. So it's pretty exciting. And here's a few things that the grant has helped us do and it will help us do. Um, it's just help us to continue to develop our music curriculum, uh, print music materials for the free lessons. It really does help with our general operating expenses. And compared to other groups, I think our operating expenses are pretty low. Um, but we have been able to purchase equipment, loan instruments to new students until they can purchase their own instruments. And so that's been really helpful for us. Um, just touching on this again with the, the class curriculum, James been instrumental, no pun intended, um, in helping us to um, build our curriculum. And it's, it's awesome to take a 12 week course and walk new students through step-by-step -step learning the, the technique and the skills, reading music, starting just get right in and, and performing and playing. Um, and so part of the grant will help us with our outreach with community concerts, both for free and for charge. Um, I have touched on this. It helps us purchase some student instruments like practice chanters, practice drum pads, some of the sticks and drums. And that's the hardest part, I think, for helping people get started with a new musical instrument, you know, performing is, are they committed to doing it? Yes, baby steps. And then there's a big commitment buying their own instrument. Um, and then also with operations, this is our web presence, our website, SEO and marketing. And we have been asked to get insurance. And so part of the grant helps us provide that, that chunk of money for that. Um, it's fun to see families get together. This is a father and son, Jeff and Lizzie, and they've came to the band and they've been performing and they've loved it. They're also instructors in our band. Um, Jeff's been a pipe major. So a little bit about our demographics. The Garden Valley Pipe Band has approximately 30 band members. We are multi-generational and approximately 25% are ORM residents. In our free lessons, we teach approximately 40 students per year um, and 20% of the students are ORM residents. And then about four to eight students graduate and if they want to join the band, that's an option for them. If they want to continue on their own, that's great. And this is just an estimate based on the number of performances and parades and opportunities we have to be in front of a crowd. Approximately 10,000 spectators and maybe around 5,000 or ORM residents um, throughout the course of the year. I love this picture because it shows some of our students, past students, um, and as we go to uh, Scottish festivals and other concerts and venues, they're excited to play and to share what they've been learning. And to me, again, that's rewarding, not only to, to hear the music, but to see other people have success as we you know, have this opportunity. James, do you wanna to touch on this? Where are some of the places you can hear the Garden Valley Pipe Band? Yeah. Um, so, what, of course, when there are parades, we're often in them. Um, 
that's 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 one of our main things that we get out there. Um, we've been applying for a few years now for the uh, the Orem City Concert Series, the one in the park. I don't know if we're quite what they're looking for, <laughs> but other other than that, we find as many opportunities as we can um, in the local area. We've played a lot for the uh, with the the uh, Provo Congregational uh, Community Church, and um, we've been really hopeful that we'll be able to play some community concerts at the new library hall as well. Um, that, of course, is reaching it. COVID again has prevented big, big events there, but hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to do that kind of stuff. The Scottish festivals that we play at are local. We've gone as far as uh, Las Vegas. Um, sometimes we do go out of state, but we always play all the local state ones. Those are a, a competition and performance. And um, it is fun that uh, there are there are other pipe bands here in Utah. At, at present, Garden Valley is the only one that's sort of an educational foundation first. And as a result, we do have students who live elsewhere in the state or after taking classes, move elsewhere in the state. And so over the years, we've started to build up sort of a, a group of alumni who have come to classes here in Orem with us and now play with other pipe bands uh, in the state and outside of the state at this point too. We have some alumni in Arizona and stuff like that too now. So it's kind of building a wider community based on this, this local thing that we have, which is a lot of fun too. I'll do a little brag point. A few years ago, James was asked to play the bagpipes in the Sarah Shell production of Brigadoon which is awesome. Again, perfect venue, right? <laughs> you need the you need the pipes. Yeah, um, any, any the local playhouse does Brigadoon, we'll, we try to get in front of them because <laughs> that's fun. And we do have a couple of pictures I wanted to show you. So this is from the Orem Summerfest Parade. Um, we've got some photos of the band getting ready for another concert and we go in full regalia. Um, on the right, this was at UVU Soccer. Um, this is an example of one of the parades here on the left. Um, and then one of our concerts we've got at night. And so again, we just love Orem. We're grateful for the funding of what it provides. Um, and this is a wrap up with our budget and grant request. Our current operating budget is around uh, 5,300. And we've made a request um, for the mini grant for 4,900 um, through the Orem Care Grant. So I guess before we go any further, we'll ask y'all if you have any questions. Any questions? No questions for me. Sounds great. I when, you practice, when you practice, where do you practice at? So we have been practicing in the past years before COVID. Um, it was Bonneville Park, just there on the, is it the, it's the north, north and eight yeah, west. North east edge. West. It's so hard to practice year round outside. Like that's not healthy and not good. We have been practicing in Linden, but we're always looking for a permanent space wherever we can in the city, so. That was, um, yeah, that's, that's been a, a constant hunt for us. So we have moved homes three times now, always looking for a good spot where we could stay year round, maybe forever someday. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And thanks, have Kenna. Night. <laughs> thank you. It was a good ending thank for you. our evening. So thank you. Yes. Good. Thank you. All right, take care. All right. Um, any discussion? Anyone want to talk about anything before we take off for the evening? Any Thank questions? You, I don't know if I don't know if maybe council members. Spencer and Lamson want to maybe just take a couple minutes to maybe express what they kind of look for and or what they think our council is kind of looking for, uh, in particular for these, these mini grants. I think I can, I can give you my opinion. I think um, the main thing we're looking for is with the care money, it's, it's uh, they're not supposed to live on the money, right? They're supposed to be able to, to, to go out and get get donations from other people and 
Um, because we have a lot of people that want care and and the thought is you know we don't mind giving money but we want them to be sustainable and not be relying on the care every year and that's what i'm seeing a pattern with a lot of these um you know like the last one we, we talked to was the uh, garden valley pipe band their budget is 5300 and they want 5000 um you know i think we need to maybe stress and, and say hey are you able to go out and try to get donations from people? Are, you know, what, what's your other avenues instead of just care tax from Orem? So I think that's sort of the sentiment. Uh, I mean, they're great, great uh, things that they're bringing to Orem, but I just think we need to, you know, we can't be a, the, their full funding because that's, I think we're doing them a disservice. So. And the, along with that, um, thanks Dave. Uh, along with that is, you know, we, we, we look for, you know these organizations that are having a, a reach and an impact with the citizens of Orem, uh, whether it be participants that are you know uh, singing in a choir or you know whatever it is that their particular art that they're offering is, uh, we like to see as much of that touching Orem as possible. So whether it be participants or concerts that they do in Orem, um, so that those care dollars are are actually benefiting as many Orem residents as possible. Thanks guys. So uh, Care Commission, any any questions or input or, or uh, anything else that you think we should be looking at as a, as a group as, I mean, we're obviously just halfway through the mini and mid-major grants and any, any questions, any, any input? On so, um, far. so I know last year we kind of talked about <laughs> that our care grant had become a, become a little bit choir heavy um, and it still feels like it is we're funding a lot of choirs and I don't know how anyway um, I guess we are funding what we're asked to fund but that's one thing I'm noticing we're still having a lot of choirs and I kind of would like to see more diversity, but I guess the other people aren't aware of the ability to ask for a grant or whatever, but um, I don't know, I am seeing, because I've been doing this, I don't know how long, like five or six years, but it is, it does just feel like some of the people who just come back every single year with the same request, <laughs> like the Chantanettes or whatever, every single year they're like, we need to replace our we're, we're going to replace our music and they say that every single year so i don't know anyway um i'm just wondering I and i i think all of these are are very legitimate sort of uh decision criteria that that can help us uh, uh shape ultimately kind of the, the recommendations that that uh we we put together and, and submit to the city council so i'm hearing mm -hmm. You know, Orem City, Orem residents first. Um, you know, being aware of total budget versus the request, and then finally, a, a diverse try to diversify as best we can the types of of arts groups um, that that uh, that we fund or recommend funding. Yeah, I think that's that's was one thing we talked about last year was. We kind of tried to do that. We tried to give a little bit more, and I don't know what the feeling, we tried to give a little bit more to some of the ones that were maybe a little more divert, like, and because we had so many choirs that were, and it was just all choir. And we were like, <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it goes next time. But that was just kind of how it was last. How the, how, I haven't seen the, who's doing this next time. So anyway. Maybe right. in the application that's, that we can add some kind of paragraph that it educates the organizations as to what is most important so that we can slowly train applicants to what really the needs of the city of Orem is wanting. Yeah, because it doesn't feel, it feels like the things they address in their little presentation, it, they don't really address like how we're gonna, like how we're gonna use this as seed money or, you know, I mean, to grow to, because a lot of times you need money if you're going to start, but some of these people are just doing, they're basically just using care, like they were saying, to just continue 
And maybe that could be part of the part of the application is how are you going to like what other things are you doing? Or maybe we should be asking that question. But anyway, I don't know. And that may be that may in part, I think that um, some of that may be inherent with uh, the the law, the, the state law around the care funds. My my understanding is um, there these entities are required to use it for operational rather than like a a capital um, facility type thing. So that, you know, that, that'd be nice if, if it was a sort of a one-time thing that they could then use towards having, for example, a permanent facility and then, and then they're not coming back for the ongoing operational request. But I think some of the reason behind that, again, is, is the state law says these funds need to be used for operational uses. So just, just so you know. And I think most, many of them are so small. I mean, a lot of them are volunteer run, you know, and so this is a good source of funding for them because finding other funds could be a challenge. But I, I think it is a good point. You know, they need to be looking to diversify their funds. I mean, I worked for a nonprofit for a long time. And that was one of the things that people look for in grant applications was diversity of funding you know, that you weren't just relying on that. So I think that is an important piece of it. Okay. Well, I think I'm good. Uh, so it's next, is it next week? Is that yeah, when the next, next one is? Next, yeah, we're just making you spend Monday nights with us. So next Monday night <laughs> at 5.45. I mean, you guys can come even at 5.50 if you want, 5.55, whatever you want to do there. Um, okay. And I plan on spending a little bit longer because we will we'll probably end up having, we have to have our discussion, our deliberations as well. Um, and so plan on staying probably, I would say at least till 8.30, 8.45 next week. So um, next week we'll have a little more diversity. We only have one choir. So that will be good. Um, that will be presenting. Um, we do have the opera and symphony. Um, so next week or next week we have Contorum Chamber Choir, Utah Live Concerts Foundation, Tools of Freedom, Utah Theater Bloggers Association, Utah Symphony and Opera, Utah Cultural Alliance, um, the National Institute for Story, Timpanoga Symphony Orchestra, um, the African Cultural Center, um, Utah Chinese Association, then the one that I added was fit to recover. So that will be at 750. You don't have that on your schedule because we they we thought they were majors and they're not. So um, fit to recover will be at 750. And okay. That's, and that's Ken, are we, we going to redo Viva Brazil? Is that what we'll try to put them yeah, back I'll in? I'll try to get week. her on as well. That'd be good. So, um, yeah, I've left messages all over. So hopefully she'll get me get back to me. I believe she told me that she was, I remember, early, I couldn't find the email, but I think she told me earlier that maybe a board member was coming and maybe they didn't know what they were, you know, maybe it didn't get relayed to them. So um, we'll see what she says on that. But, well, if you don't have any other questions, um, I appreciate you being here with us tonight and um, Laurel already had to leave us. So um, but have a good night. And if you have any questions during the week, let me know. If you want more information on some of these um, organizations, let me know. And if you, I can get information from them if you need that. Um, so just let me know. Hey, well, thank you. you know, I'll be here on the next one, but I'll just be a little late. So don't okay. wait for me. I'm on the road. So I'll just be, as soon as I get to my hotel room, I'm going to log in. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Spencer. Brandy, thank you. Have thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much, everyone, for your time and input. Sure appreciate thank it. Have a good night. Thank Bye. you. Good night and go jazz. <laughs>